my brothers and sisters in Christ. And yesterday's reflection, uh, I reflect on yesterday's first reading from Acts chapter 15, the Council of Jerusalem, this gathering, this first ecumenical council, when together in union, Peter, the apostles, the other chief disciples gather to confer on this problem and practice that has presented itself. They gather together in prayer and through the guidance of the Holy Spirit, find the path forward for ramifications for Gentile converts to the faith. Now we see the aftermath, the fruit of what happens in that council. A letter is composed, and that letter is taken out and delivered to the churches so that they may hear the words rejoicing, not by word of mouth, not by everyone's different interpretation of it, but this is the word of the church. This is the word in our name gathered. And so these days, you know, we hear about different kinds of, of documents when things go out. There's letters, there's news reports, things. I joked yesterday about we, we sometimes lose sight of different, you know, levels of, of magisterium of the exercise of the authority of the church. And newspaper articles are not an exercise of magisterium. Press conferences on airplanes with the Pope aren't an exercise of magisterium. That doesn't mean they're not important, that they're not guiding. But the, the, the magisterium of the church is exercised when that invested with that authority, the successors of the apostles gather in union with the Pope and through the guidance of the Spirit seek out very deliberately the answers to clarifications of doctrine, of discipline, of practice, you know, combating heresy, whatever it may be at a time of the church. And then from that, uh, a decision is reached. They, 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 if you will, they publish the Acts. It's much more formalized today. As we see in Acts, it's not as formalized, but nonetheless, they produce. This is the letter. This is the text. Everyone who has it, it's objective. No one can question. It's not word of mouth, secondhand. This is what we say. And it's sent forth, and the church receives it with joy. So unlike, you know, again, the, the press conferences, the newspaper articles, the interviews, the books... We can look to those times when, um, you know, we look at the keystone documents, for example, Vatican II is the last ecumenical council, so we look at the documents that came forth from that. Or when there's recently been synods, we look for those documents that the Pope puts out that they call, you know, post-synodal apostolic exhortations. Well, it's named after this. We see that this letter is called an exhortation that's given out to the people. The, someone, the, in this case, the Pope composes, okay, after this gathering, here is what, as Pope, I have to say to the church. In this case, an ecumenical council, that's the highest level of authority, even higher than a synod, the Pope writing these letters. The ecumenical council itself is considered to be infallible in what it, what it presents as the, the codified teaching. This is a beautiful gift of the church. This is how we're guided, not through cults of personality, not guided through opinions, but when those who legitimately have authority in the church passed down through the apostles, the succession, come together in union with one another, in union with the Holy Father, the Pope, who is first amongst equals, but is that guarantor of unity in the church. When that gathering happens for a specific purpose, invoking the help of the Holy Spirit and gather, and what comes out of that when solemnly declared in that council can therefore be trusted as being protected from error by God. Does it always mean it's the best you know, explanation or formulation? No. Does it mean that it's of great fruitfulness importance? Not necessarily, but it does mean that it's not leading astray. It is not erroneous. And that is a big deal. For all of our other brethren, uh, of our non-Catholic brethren who, you know, six, sola scriptura, they, they have the, the scriptures and that's all that's reliable. And everything past sin is up in the air and we see the changing of the winds generation to generation. There, there isn't, it's a drift. As Catholics, we have a beautiful gift in that we are anchored and that the word of God is still spoken in our midst. We have the scripture and the sacred tradition, not the little t tradition. Little t traditions are important, but that big t tradition that guides us, that is part of the Word of God, the deposit of faith that guides us and keeps us on a solid foundation. Yes, there are things said by people in the church that can lead us astray, and certainly individuals, no matter how high-ranking they are, when they speak on their own off the cuff, can be an error. Even popes can be an error when speaking of this way. 
But when the church is together, together the collegiality of the College of Apostles with the guidance of the Holy Spirit, the Lord provides for his church, for his people. And in this, we place great faith, great assurance. We take great comfort because we know that Christ is present for his people and that he guides his church from age to age until the end of time. May God bless you all.